Anger. Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Apostle, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, The strong is not the one who overcomes the people by his strength, but the strong is the one who controls himself while in anger. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Purification of the Soul. In the last episode we were talking about anger and how about how anger is or extreme anger is a very uh, evil thing and some of the uh, effects of anger on a person's uh, heart, on his tongue, on his limbs. Let's have a recap uh, about some of that. What are the things that Gururaz that a person can see uh, on another person who's angry? Uh, change in the color of his mm. face, in his yeah. face, um, that he begins to show anim animalistic behavior, you know, sweating, throw, punching, kicking, breaking some things, uh, saying bad words, yeah, swearing, cursing, yeah. yeah. He may, as you said, lose control of his tongue, mm. his Walking interaction, down, his interaction down. with other people will change, yeah, his tone of voice may become aggressive. Mm. Exactly. So uh, from this we can see that it's very important to cure this, uh, this uh, disease of, e of extreme anger. And a person can do this uh, by doing a number of things. First and foremost, he should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this should lead him to having fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that would then make him mindful of what he is doing. It will remind him that he is actually a worshipper of Allah. That ultimately it is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he seeks. He should realize that if he behaves inappropriately uh, based on this anger, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't be pleased with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيتُ And remember your Lord when you forget. And this actually one of the companions, uh, one, of the, sorry, one of the great scholars of the past, Ikrimah radiallahu ta'ala anhu rahimahullah, he mentioned he was a, he was an, a person who was uh, an exegist. In other words, that he would actually give uh, tafsir of the Qur'an, uh, explanation of the Qur'an. And this scholar, he said that the word idhnasit, when you forgot, actually means when you get angry. So remember your Lord when you, became, when you become angry. And this is very important. Uh, we can see this, for example, that he, a person, he gets angry, someone says something to him. Immediately he should remember Allah. Uh, Ta'ala, and, and this is a, a good um, way of removing that anger because he should realize he's actually a worshipper of Allah, he's actually uh, one of the creation of Allah, and he should look at the other person and say, Actually, he's also a worshipper of Allah, and he has feelings just like I have feelings. He's made of uh, you know, skin and, and, and flesh and bone, just like I am, and I also have feelings just like he has. So, this will calm down his, his temper. The next remedy is to get well acquainted with the virtues of forgiveness. Forgiveness, forbearance, endurance, and in fact restraining anger. Uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said that a man asked for permission to meet Umar radiallahu anhu, and he was given permission to do so. Then the man said to Umar radiallahu anhu, O oh, ibn al-Khattab, by Allah, you do not give us much from the public treasury, nor do you judge between us fairly. And so you can imagine Umar radiallahu anhu, uh, he got angry at this point. He got very angry uh, and he was about to punish the man for this uh, statement. But one of, the, one of his companions said to him, O oh, Amir al Mu'minin, O oh, leader of the faithful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hold to forgiveness, command what is right, and turn away from the ignorant ones. So we can see, and he said that this person is from the ignorant ones. And so therefore, Umar radiallahu anhu, he complied with this verse and immediately he 
he stopped. He didn't get angry uh, with this person. He restrained his anger. And Umar radiallahu anhu would always comply with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one example of that. Uh, he would remember the verses of the Quran and this would, uh, he would lead him to compliance. Let's have some more examples where the Sahaba, they actually, uh, they were in a state or they did something and this actually, uh, they were reminded about this or they were given a verse from the Quran and this led them to uh, immediately stopping their things. Can you think of anything? I guess one example that comes to mind is again Umar radiallahu an uh, in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah mm. when uh, it seemed to him that the concessions that the Prophet had made in that treaty showed the weakness of so the Muslims. What concessions did the Prophet make? He said well, no, in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah that they would return any any Muslims that went to the Kuffar. Yes, and the fact that they wouldn't be able to do Umrah oh, we'll to because Umrah. at this point the Sahaba they came all the way from Medina to Mecca. They got to the outskirts of Mecca in Hudaybiyah. And the Quraysh said, no, you're not coming in. You cannot come in to, uh, to do your Umrah. You have to go back. And I mean, I can imagine once we were driving to Medina and it took, you know, four or five hours. And uh, from Mecca to Medina, the opposite direction. And we were discussing this in the car and we said to ourselves, imagine if the people of Medina turned us away after a four or five hours journey. We would be very upset, we'd get very angry. Okay, but imagine if you went by camel, by horse, and so on and so forth. You came all the way to Mecca from Medina, and this led this, and and then they said you can't come in. So yeah, this was one of the concessions. Yeah, so Omar radiallahu anhu, I think, was uh, was upset that Muslims, that the Muslims, even though they were upon the on the truth, had there to give in to these conditions. Mm. So I think he voiced his displeasure at the Prophet Sallallahu and didn't agree with his with his uh, with, the, with what he had agreed to and I think Abu Bakr reprimanded him for that for not uh, complying with what the mm -hmm. Prophet Sallallahu did and then I think the ayah was revealed regarding the <laughs> yes. so then after that Umar Radiyan regretted his, uh, his disagreement yeah, because the ayah Islam. had clearly shown that what what the Prophet ﷺ had agreed to was actually something noble, was something good. It was actually a victory or a fath, a victory for the believers. We have, indeed, we have given you or opened for you a great victory, as Allah says. And uh, actually, as a side point, Umar anhu, he, in this occasion, when this ayah was revealed, remember he was, he was angry initially. But when this ayah was revealed from the Qur'an, in the Qur'an, that indeed, this is actually a victory for you. When this had been revealed, he went round the streets of Medina on his horse and he started saying, Inna fatahna laka fathan mubina. Indeed, we've opened for you a, uh, a clear victory. And so he started saying this, uh, in other words, showing that he was wrong before. And this is a very important characteristic uh, to have. Likewise, he should frighten himself. And this is another way of you know, reducing his anger. He should frighten himself and remind himself of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to, and to think to himself that actually the punishment of Allah upon me is greater than my punishment upon this person who I'm angry with. If I take revenge upon this man uh, for my anger, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take revenge upon me on the day of judgment. And I'll be, I'm much more in need of forgiveness, and so I should also show forgiveness to this man. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-Rahman. That those who show forgiveness or mercy, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ar-Rahman shows mercy to them. He should also warn himself against the consequences of enmity or revenge and glee at, the, and, and glee at misfortune of his uh, disputants. He should also rem remember uh, that he's not free from being afflicted by any calamity at any time just like them. So this also should reduce his anger. He should think to himself that, well, you know, I'm not free from this. I might do something bad uh, in the same way. Uh, and also he should think about his ugly appearance. And we spoke about that at the beginning of this episode as well. Uh, you know, the, the disgusting appearance that he looks. Uh, perhaps if a person looks in the mirror, he'll see some of these uh, weird you know, characteristics of uh, the angry person. So he should remember that in this state of anger, he's the one furthest away from the manners of 
the, uh, of the prophets and the noble scholars of Islam. And he shouldn't think. He should think over the cause that invites him to take revenge. So for example, the cause of the anger, maybe that the shaitan comes to him and says, hey, don't sit there and take these insults. This person, he's just insulted you. Don't sit there and take this. Let's have an example of that from Ali radiallahu anhu. This happened in a, a battlefield. Do you know the example? Uh, was it the one where the, the person who was fighting spat at him? Yeah, exactly, that's the one. Let's ha- hear about that. Um, I believe in the battle he was, he was about to kill uh, one of the disbelievers. And uh, just as he was about to kill him, the, uh, the person spat in his face. So he left him. Yeah, he was a Jew. He was about to kill the Jew in the battlefield and the Jew spat at him. Hmm. So he left him. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't kill, kill him. him. So I think the Jew was very obviously surprised yes. as to why. And he asked him. He asked him why and he said, I believe that because um, when you spat at me, I was going to kill you out of the anger exactly. of, uh, of you doing something to myself as yes. opposed to for the sake of Allah. Yes. So we can see how important it is to judge why <laughs> am I getting angry. If Ali radiallahu anhu had killed him because of the anger, then this would have been a big sin upon him. But he realized this and he didn't do this. And we'll talk about this a bit more inshallah uh, after the break. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. Be proactive. Dr. Haitham Al Haddad teaches us how to take a conscious control over our life, set our goals, and work to achieve them in Islam. Take firm steps towards your future, be positive, and be proactive. Every single Muslim needs to have in order to be an effective person. So proactivity uh, in Islam, how to serve our religion and how to serve uh, our life and our guides through all of this. The proactive person is always motivated. The proactive person always have high ambition. The proactive person, he will not lose his time. He will not waste his time. The proactive person is a generous person. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Alaikum assalam. We're talking before about some of the remedies for anger. Some of the remedies for anger. Uh, the next remedy that we look at is that the person who is afflicted with this disease of excessive anger, then he should remember that his anger has been caused by something that happened according to Allah's decree. And nothing happens except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. And so this wasn't his own will often. He should say to himself, why did I get angry? Why should I get angry? Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed, then that has happened. So he should know that Allah's will is more deserving of him being pleased with than his own will. And this is a very important point. So for example, if a person comes along and uh, he's angry because he got demotion, for example, at work. Okay, he got demoted at work. Uh, Rather than getting angry about it, of course he can't perhaps help his internal state, but he should control his anger. And rather than... uh, you know, lashing out or something like that, he should say to himself, actually, this is by Allah's will. And I shouldn't actually get angry because if I'm getting angry with this, then I'm actually getting angry with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. He should also remember that excessive anger often leads to actions that he will regret and he'll feel remorseful. He should save himself the embarrassment of having to apologize for actions that he'll later be ashamed of. And we saw that in the example that you gave of the uh, in the last episode. Can you just repeat that for the viewers? Uh, well, uh, as, I, as I said in the last episode, uh, there were uh, two partners. They had a cafe. And actually, they uh, broke uh, the, uh, the cafe because they were angry with, with uh, each other. They split up as partners. Yeah, yep. uh, because they were angry with, with each other. And they got into a fight or something? No, no, no. No? <laughs> just <laughs> with <that>. words. <laughs> okay. 
Yes. Because of words. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's sometimes worse. Yes. Sometimes when the person speaks with his tongue, oh, it's, it's worse than um, worse than uh, be, uh, be a beating each other. Yeah. 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 So the person felt regret afterwards. Yes, uh, but actually they didn't uh, apologize to each other mm. because you know it's sometimes it's hard to apologize. Mm. Now, if they'd implemented this point, if they at the time of getting angry they felt actually if I say something now it will lead to bad consequences. Yes, and it will lead to regret. It will lead to embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And it would lead to bad, you know, consequences. If they thought that, would that have cured yes, I think that so. problem at that yeah. time? Yes, I think so. And you'll see that a lot of these remedies are practical remedies that we can do, that mm -hmm. we can think about at that time. The next remedy, he should remind himself that people actually avoid and keep away from people who have a short temper. And if he continues in his anger, he'll end up by himself, possibly losing his family, friends and job. And it's therefore appropriate for him to ensure that he controls his anger. I'm sure we've all seen this. I mean, there's people, there's often people where uh, you just avoid. <laughs> and one of the reasons is, if he's coming this way, you go home the other that. way. Why? Because of his anger. Uh, because, he, you know, any little thing that a person does, uh, he'll get angry, he'll get irritated, and so it's best to avoid that person, otherwise we'll end up into an argument. He should also seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, from the rejected shaitan, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ordered us to do. Let's take your example, Muhammad. Uh, repeat it for the viewers. You gave an example in the last episode about someone getting yeah. angry. Yeah, I mentioned in the last episode that, for instance, if a group of friends are playing football or any type of sports and one of them in the other team perhaps does something that the other team dislikes or maybe they dislike a decision that the referee made, then most likely that team or the person in which the decision was made against, he will get angry. Sometimes, yeah. But if he wants to seek refuge in Allah, and accept it, or perhaps sit down or leave the game, and then he will, he will not he will not become angry. Yes. And then yes. none of the, the the bad qualities and the disadvantages of anger will not show. So in effect. this in this uh, for example in this case he should seek refuge in Allah from Shaitan, as the Prophet said. So. We can even apply the previous uh, remedy, as we said, that he should uh, remember that excessive anger leads him to actions and consequences that later he will regret. How could that help here? Because what happens if a person gets angry and, for example, most likely, and punches someone else on the football pitch? Yeah, he will definitely it will have repercussions. Firstly, he'll have to apologize. He will review what he did. But wait, does he get banned? Most likely, he'll get banned. So then, repercussions, I mean, you know, the list can go on, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Abu Dhar, radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet said, when one of you becomes angry while standing, he should sit down. If the anger leaves him, well and good. Otherwise, he should... Uh, he should lie down. And again, this is a practical way that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, showed us. A person gets into an argument with his wife, uh, rather than carrying on yani, arguing, let him sit down. Mm -hmm. if, he, if that doesn't, let him go to bed, go to sleep, go lie down, uh, make wudu in some narrations also. I guess it's harder uh, to punch if you're sitting down, right? It's harder to punch when you're <laughs> sitting down. The, the last remedy, if you like, uh, he should supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He should ask him to remove his evil characteristic and replace it with many good qualities. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the one who actually created us. Doesn't He not know the one who created? So He's the one who created us. He knows what we are uh, about. And we'll touch up on this point, inshallah, uh, after looking at some uh, remedies uh, that some of the people on the street thought uh, could cure anger. I control my anger by, uh, you know, like taking things easily and uh, I think about what I'm doing like a million times before I do anything so that I wouldn't regret it in the future and I just try to control my temper. Just try to control himself when he's angry and uh, try not to take any action while he's angry. I think it's about controlling himself and controlling his actions. Well, I think that uh, getting angry makes us get in bad mode, you know and uh, makes us uh, can't cope uh, in uh, situations in life uh, makes us uh, mad or upset that's all anger is a human nature we shouldn't uh, be anger because uh, we may lose some people we love when i got my grades i found that they were uh, they were very uh, bad that's why i felt myself very angry and i think my anger was permissible in this situation well, islam can help in curing anger uh by uh, reading Quran and uh, 
getting closer to Allah and praying. Very interesting uh, comments made uh, by the brothers. Um, there's another issue here. We were talking just before, the, before we were listening to their comments. Uh, that a person should supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this has many, many benefits. First and foremost, supplication is an act of ibadah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ad-du'a'u huwa al-ibadah. Du'a is ibadah. Okay, du'a is an act of worship. So when a person actually makes du'a to Allah, he's actually increasing himself in iman. He's increasing himself because he's doing good deeds. And one of the consequences of good deeds, of doing good deeds, is that a person's iman increases. So when a person's iman increases, what does this lead to his bad qualities? Decrease. They decrease. decrease. Hmm. They decrease. And anger, excessive anger, is a bad quality, so therefore it decreases. And uh, likewise, secondly, the person, he should realize that Allah is the one who created him, and perhaps with that deficiency, and Allah is the one who has the power over all things to remove that deficiency. And this goes with all the bad qualities that a person has in him. And this is perhaps the primary thing that a person should remember. In any evil characteristic, he should supplicate to Allah in private, O oh Allah, remove this disease of excessive anger from me. And this works wonders, because Allah is the one who created him. Allah is the one who can change him. And I mean, if we take your example, Guru Ras, uh, when a person has this uh, regular uh, you know, occurrence of anger, perhaps this could apply to that, couldn't it? Repeat the example. Yeah, I've just mentioned uh, regarding road rage. When a person is, you know, for example, driving, and you know, anything, any little thing that happens, he becomes very angry. Somebody, you know, pushes in, he gets angry. He, someone, you know, does something on the road that makes him angry. So maybe that if a person is prone to that, then to run over an old lady if she's pushing <laughs> or something like this. Yeah. So maybe if a person is prone to that anger, then he should make dua to Allah. Mm. I've actually seen a brother. He was a Muslim brother. He was in the car, he was driving, and, uh, you know, this anger actually led him to racism and starting calling the person who pushed in, oh, this person is this and this and this. So it led him to racism. And so obviously this racism is also another disease. So you can see how one disease often leads to another disease if a person doesn't control that disease. So how would we remedy that in light of what we've heard? For example, making dua to Allah. Yeah. That, you know, he... He doesn't allow him to get lose it, lose his temper. And this is important because before making, uh, before asking Allah to remove this evil disease of excessive anger, he has to recognize that he has this, and this requires that a person is honest with himself. And this is something that is very important. Some of the Sahaba they used to say, "Hasibu uh, anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu." Yani, in other words. Account yourselves before the day when you will be accounted for. In other words, when you will be accounted for by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we have the opportunity to account for our bad deeds, our bad qualities, to try to change them. But on that day, on the day of judgment, we won't be able to change our qualities. It's too late. So we should account for ourselves. And this is one way we make dua to the person. How would he do this in this case? He would make dua to Allah about his road rage. How would he do it? Yeah, I mean, what, what would he do? Just raise that and make dua, maybe read the dua before, yes. before trans for transport. Exactly, and is transport. it something that difficult? Very Not practical, yes. very practical. There's actually one thing more that I want to mention, that it's appropriate to note that not all types of anger, as we mentioned in the last episode, are evil. Okay, Because anger itself is not necessarily a bad quality. It's actually the consequences of anger that can be bad. Let's have a look at some good examples or some examples of where anger can be something good. What do you think, Baha? About anger? Yeah. Uh, good examples. An anger where, uh, an instance of anger where it's actually good. For instance, if uh, the laws of Allah that Allah has laid down are broken. Exactly. If one of the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. and in fact one of the rights of the creation also, if they are violated, then we should get angry. And this is where the Prophet ﷺ would get angry. But the main thing is, the example of this, the Prophet ﷺ is the best example of perfection and moderation in, in terms of anger and contentment. So he would control his anger, suppress it, but at the same time that anger would lead him to stop the evil. 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger وسلم, said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran, fal yughayirhu bi yadihi. Fa illam yastati' fa bi lisanihi, fa illam yastati' fa bi qalbihi, wa thalika da'afu liman. Whoever among you sees an evil, let him stop it with his hand. If he can't, then with his tongue. If he cannot, then he should hate it in his heart. And that's the weakest form of iman. If a person is not angry, when he sees someone doing something haram, how can he stop it? Wasallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته